Almost a year ago, we drove an Evo 9 MR and an STI swapped Subaru Forester from Florida to Alaska. And now we've decided to take another road trip. This time, it'll be in cars that we bought for $5,000. Ben will be taking his supercharged Miata, and I will be taking my Type R swapped Honda Civic on a journey of 7,000 miles. Down to the southernmost point in the continental US, and all the way up north to Nova Scotia. I'm a Miata owner and I am fabulous! Back when we were in Toronto, I was fairly vocal about my thoughts that we should get snow tires, but Ben did not seem to think that that was a priority. As a result, we have no snow tires on. Ben knew this was gonna happen. He told us we should have gotten snow tires. I didn't listen. I thought it'd be fine to have all seasons. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but both of my doors won't open. Both of the front side doors won't open, but the rear hatch opens. So I'm gonna climb in through the rear hatch of the car to start the car, warm it up, and hopefully I can open the door later. I just opened my car with a wrench. Hey! Got my ECU here. Here we go, driving out of the winter wonderland. Got all seasons on is not the ideal tire for this. The snow was a false alarm. It looks like the Canadians do a great job of keeping snow off of the roads. It does appear that the road is black. The road is black, we're good. It seems that all of the main roads are devoid of snow. All right, so we've just left Toronto and now we are up in, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, right outside of Montreal. And uh, it snowed last night at the hotel that we stayed at. A good amount, probably like six or seven inches of snow. What's the temperature, Ben? Negative four degrees Celsius. And I have to hold this nozzle. In Canada, they don't have the little locky thing that you can just like hold it and let it go. You have to actually keep your hand on it. Of course, everyone in Canada probably has gloves, but and jackets and hats. Okay, I will say one thing though. In Virginia, you'd freak out about a snow like this. But here in Canada, they actually prep the roads. All the roads are black, it's so easy to get around. Like, the roads are black. That would never happen in Virginia. We are on our way up to Quebec. We're gonna be passing out of Ontario into Quebec. Or Quebec. 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 Apparently the locals here call it Quebec. So um, take that as you will, but um, everything is French here. Every, every, every road sign, every person speaks French. Uh, we looked it up and it's 95% of the population here speaks French. So apparently 95% of Quebec is, speaks French. Not to say that they only speak French, but they are, they speak it as either a first or second language or something like that. All of the road signs are in French, so it's a really interesting language barrier driving through here because I don't understand anything. Trying to pick up as much French as I can so that I don't have to hit people with my extremely offensive French accent. You do not simply ignore the mass de miata. You stare. You turn your head and look. And the let's go up. And the let's go down. This is the mass de miata MX-5. Look upon its glory. Look upon the glory of this vehicle. I've been learning one line in French. And that line is that I don't speak French. Je ne parle pas français. I probably sound like an idiot, but hopefully that gets the message across. Across. <laughs> all of my language that I know is just crumbling underneath me. Since we're all wildly uncultured, we decided to stop and buy some staple Canadian items to feel more connected with the area. 
Chris's research says that this canned syrup is the good stuff. Then we wanted to find some special Canadian nice. alcohol. Canadian uh, whiskeys. Well, let's go find the good Canadian stuff. <laughs> it's absinthe. Oh. Yep. I got some red wine um, product of Quebec. At least that's what I think it says. It's just pour the way to Quebec. Something like that. Exactly. So, ben, however, was less interested in the alcohol and more interested in the French Canadian women. Ben, how was your experience talking to that French girl? Lovely. She's so, she was so kind, and her accent was beautiful. Did you get her number? I did not get her number. Mostly because I didn't know how to ask for her number. Uh, and also, uh, the roaming charges would be insane, so it's not worth it. But she, she, she was basically an angel on earth. As much as I wanted to stay and keep chatting with this French-speaking angel, we couldn't spend all day shopping. As it turns out, though, Quebec thankfully has other beautiful sights to offer. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. This is my Mamiya RB67 with Prism Binder. I've got Ektar 100 in right now. Um, this is medium format film. I love it a lot. It's really good. I've lately started to like this more than any of my digital cameras. So this is what I've this is what I've been going for on this trip. This is St. Lawrence River, and you can say what you want about how we should have come up to Canada in the summer, but seeing this massive river nearly frozen over has taken our breath away. Oh, come on. Oh, that... We had worked up an appetite, and we wanted to see what real Quebec poutine tasted like. So we headed for downtown Quebec City to find a place to eat. All right, so this is poutine and from Quebec. And we're in Quebec, and this has duck in it, and it's a lot, a lot better than Tim Hortons. Um, I paid like three times more for this than the Tim Hortons one, so it, it is three times better, at least. Mm -hmm. um, it, this doesn't taste like fast food like Tim Hortons does. So, I really like it. As we head into our third Canadian province, we're getting close to Nova Scotia. We're now in New Brunswick, and we're about at the northernmost part of the trip. We've actually just made it into an earlier time zone. This is the easternmost point that I've ever been in North America, and we've still got about nine hours left to drive east. But before we continue, Chris wanted to stop by and see the world's longest covered bridge. So we are here, the world's longest covered bridge. I'm very impressed. This thing is, what is it, 1,200 feet long? It's entirely wood. This is really cool. I don't know why they felt the need to make this a covered bridge. I feel like this would function just fine as an uncovered bridge. But I'm into it. Lots of engineering going on here. Really cool stuff. The Benz might not be impressed, but I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I think this was a worthwhile diversion. Snowmobiles are very common here in New Brunswick. According to New Brunswick Tourism, there are 8,000 kilometers of snowmobile trails up here. I'm definitely going to need to come back up here someday and rip up some of those trails. But today, we are gonna make it to Nova Scotia. Only five hours left to go. The potholes up here were getting really bad. I'm sure that our alignments were thrown way off. The Miata beat me up so badly that I had Devin fill in and drive while I took a rest. We're so close to Nova Scotia now. Only one more tank of gas and we'll be there. 45 Canadian dollars, it's really not that bad. Um, it's not like the last road trip in British Columbia where it was like $9 a gallon. This is 
close to five dollars, but that's Canadian, so like US, it's like four dollars. It's really not that bad. So that's pretty cool. We're getting pretty close to Nova Scotia, which is also pretty cool. A lot of snow here. It's kind of cold. The roads are dry. And that's what's important. Only a few more kilometers away now, and it looks like we're gonna make it. It was calm and peaceful for the rest of the drive, and as the day turned into night, we had just crossed into Nova Scotia. This is Cabot Trail, the Holy Grail of Nova Scotia. It's a 300 kilometer road that loops Cape Breton Island on the northernmost part of Nova Scotia. Cabot Trail is a world famous destination location, but most people come here in the summer and it's a whole new world here in the winter. Welcome to the Atlantic Ocean. This is Nova Scotia, the, the northernmost part uh, that we're going to go to anyway. Uh, this is Cabot Trail and uh, it's gorgeous. Honestly, the snow, I was worried that the snow and the cold was gonna make this kind of dreary, but uh, I think it adds to it. Yeah, it's extremely scenic, uh, extremely scenic. Cape Breton Island had some of the most spectacular sights that we have ever seen. A combination of warm looking beachfront sprinkled with ice. It's pretty odd to go on a trip and be able to get sunburn in Florida and then potentially frostbite uh, up here in Nova Scotia. It's but. not as cold as I expected it to be. No? No. No. Oh. Yeah, I thought it would be like zero Fahrenheit. Yeah, well, it's not. No, it's not. What is it? It's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit and it's gorgeous here. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if I'm going to beat the crap out of a car on some horrible, horrible northern roads, I would rather it be a $5,000 Miata than an Evo or a nice FXT. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm not like so worried about the Civic. If it was a genuine Type R, there's like no way you'd see this up here. You know what I mean? They're worth so much. You know, it's surprising looking at a map, just how far east Nova Scotia is to, to the rest of like the continental US and how stuff like that. How far east is it? It's as far east as Kansas is west of Virginia, where we're from. Wow, Yeah, that's crazy. At least roughly. That's just based on looking at a map, but it's, uh, it's, it's out there. We're in a different time zone. That's true which I don't know, logically, I never thought there was another time zone over, but I guess that makes sense. I've never been in this time zone, except flying through. Yeah, neither have I. It's a good time zone. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> 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 Joke's on you. <laughs> mm, that feels great against my bare midriff. Oh man. Yeah, Ben, go get my camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh! This is super cool. It's it's super pretty and super scenic. Um, I've never seen like icebergs like this. Yeah. Icebergs. Um, and just like Canada in general, I haven't seen like frozen lakes and rivers. Um, and this this place has all of it. It's super scenic. It, it looks like um, like a picture out of a, a magazine or like a, a calendar. So this like ice field out there is really cool. So I'm getting really close to the ocean and you can see like the ice chunks just like rocking back and forth. It's really cool. Um, it's a nice scenic overlook. I mean, Cabot Trail is gorgeous and it's not all in the same way. Like every section has a different reason for it being gorgeous. It's really cool. We're here a little bit in the off season. And by a little bit, I mean we're here completely in the off season, so uh, all the establishments are closed and stuff like that. But it's kind of cool to see it a little bit frozen over and whatnot. See the ice in the in the ocean and 
all that stuff. A lot of you are probably gonna say, we came here off season and it looks better in the summer. You may be right, but this looks really cool with all the snow. You can't deny that. This looks really cool, like nothing I've ever seen before. So cool, those waves, oh. I could spend all day here on Cabot Trail. The scenery is uniquely spectacular. As we drove further around to the west side of the island, we saw something that truly took our breath away. As far as our eyes could see, the ocean was completely frozen. We drove down to the shore to get up and close with this unbelievable view. We made sure that the ice was more than four inches thick, and then we did something that I thought we would never be able to do. We ran on the frozen ocean. This little Mazda Miata and this Honda Civic have managed to drive through some of the most amazing environments. And it's taken us here, to Nova Scotia and up to the frozen ocean. Something that none of us were expecting to see. But I'm so glad that we made it, because this place is breathtaking. have taken quite the abuse. And with all this salt and dirt up here in the north, our cars were completely covered. I can't even see through my windshield. So I'm gonna have to fix that before we start driving home. So driving up here in the north in the salt uh, is not doing favors to my windshield and these wiper blades are just not cutting it. Uh, or rather, they are cutting streaks into my uh, windshield. The back windshield wiper blade actually cuts into the glass itself, so I haven't been able to use that. So uh, I'm gonna swap them out so that I don't have these salt streaks all over my windshield and I can see. So uh, we don't have this back where we're from. This is gas line antifreeze. Um, Cause if there's moisture in your fuel tank, uh, it can actually freeze, which is crazy. So you put this in there to prevent that. That's uh, something I will never need where I live. <laughs> It's about 2,400 kilometers to drive home, which is only about 1,500 miles. We're driving southwest through Maine. It's gonna take a few days to get back home as we drive down the east coast. So ultimately the purpose of this trip was twofold. We on the one hand, just wanted to do an entertaining road trip with some silly cars that weren't necessarily suited for a road trip, but were fun. As a secondary goal, I wanted to see kind of if a Miata was really all that because I'd never owned one before and I've only heard good things about them. So how did the Miata perform on this trip? Well, as you probably could have guessed, just based on the size uh, and my size and the purpose that the car was built for, it's not a top tier grand touring car. This is not a car that gobbles up the miles and uh, uh, is extremely comfortable for long distances. It's not built for that necessarily. Does this Honda Civic live up to my high school expectations? 
Yes, I would say it is above and beyond my high school expectations. It's way more of a car than I ever thought it was. This car has been a little bit loud uh, with all the road noise. Like right now I'm at over 4,000 RPM just cruising on the highway. It gets a little bit droney, a little bit annoying. Um, it's something I can't bear. It's just after a couple hours, it really starts to eat away at you. Using these earmuffs have been very helpful. Very nice to have those. So I guess the question is, is Miata always the answer? And my answer to that is no. But we knew that. It's not a car that was built for everything. It's not a uh, fantastic road trip car, but it is a car that is basically peerless at what it sets out to do. If you just want to go out on a twisty road, if you want to just go to the track and have worry-free fun, this is absolutely the car for it. We've both really enjoyed driving these cars. I know the Mazda Miata is pretty small and Ben doesn't really fit into it, but he had a blast driving it at the track. And um, honestly, I don't know if he's gonna sell it after this road trip or if he might keep it. But uh, I know for me, I'm gonna keep this Honda Civic for at least a few months, put some power steering in it, put some power windows in it, and see how I like it. Uh, I don't really think that this is a long-term car for me. It doesn't really fit me and since I can't drive it on the track, 24 7 i don't really think that i'm gonna have that much excitement with this car so i think i'm probably gonna sell it once we get back to virginia with only 400 miles left to go until we're home i was involved in a wreck thankfully nobody was hurt the other driver had obviously totaled his car, and my best guess is that he was falling asleep at the wheel. So Ben was just barely involved in what could have been an absolutely insane accident just now. Uh, this Crown Vic just fishtailed with four people and a dog inside of it, uh, and went head on into uh, the Jersey barrier. Ben uh, hit his brakes, uh, slowed down very effectively uh he looks like he locked up a little bit but um just barely nosed into the uh rear wheel of this sideways crown vic uh and scraped up his front bumper a bit but yeah it could have been so much worse thankfully it doesn't look like too much damage was done and the important thing is that everybody was safe cops are here Is that a Camry? I hit my brakes as hard as I could. Plenty of cars in the right lane, can't really you know, swerve into that lane. Look behind me, the Miata is directly behind me, a couple other cars behind him. So the only thing I can do is hit the brakes, but not hard enough to get rear-ended. Uh, so I ended up sliding right into the Crown Vic that had hit the Jersey barrier. Um, thankfully, it's not too much damage, just a little bit of damage on the front bumper. Uh, definitely not gonna buff out. I'm gonna have to repaint the front bumper. But all in all, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, if I didn't have the DTC 30s on this car, probably would have slid a bit more into them. Um, I, I wish it wasn't as much traffic there. I could have hit the brakes a little bit harder, but I, I, I didn't want to get like some sort of pile up behind me, um, which I think is good that we avoided a pile up and it was only these two cars that were involved. Thankfully, the Miata is unscathed and thankfully the Civic doesn't have any damage other than the front bumper, radiator, core support, everything is okay. And, uh, and the car runs just fine. So we're gonna keep driving and uh, make it home. I'm ready to be home. The next morning, we had crossed the state line into our home state, Virginia. But before we park our cars at home, we definitely wanna make sure that we clean off all the salt and road grime from the 7,000 miles of driving. So naturally, we took our cars to Automotive Aesthetic.
And just like that, our cars were back in the stellar condition that they were before we started our road trip. I'm not sure what cars we'll take on the next road trip, but I'm already excited to get back out there. All right, so this is my 2000, <laughs> that's not a 2000. Chris, how was your experience? Sorry, <laughs> forgot what I was doing. <laughs> All right, there we go, we did it. <laughs> ben, uh, Ben, 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 Ben. You guys are so funny. <laughs> Can you guys just like keep jabbing each other? Uh. <laughs> yes. You. That's that's going in the bloopers. <laughs> We're gonna go home and eat some microwave fried rice and yogurt. <laughs> what do you wanna eat, Chris? You wanna have some microwaved fried rice and yogurt? Sure. Okay. Oh. Oh. This water's over there. Oh, Ben, look out. This water's on the ground there by the drilling bag. They look all so chill. So Ben, a couple of ground rules. Um, the brakes are not really good, so don't lean on those. Definitely keep it in second gear. That'll give you enough engine braking to kind of take some of the load off the brakes. Um, it will come around on you in, in tight hairpins. Uh, so be frugal with the throttle. Uh, and then also, this is essential. Um, your hair is going to get messed up because it's a convertible, um, so you'll want to fix that because okay. you can't so drive can, a Miata and look bad. I can fix it on the go. You can fix it on the go. I All know right. what's going to happen to your hair. Is there a special way I need to use this? Uh, high, and then the, oh. uh, the outlet's over there. Oh. All right. What's the word? What am I looking for? Oh, f oh f me dead. F Oof. Ah, we can't include most of that. Border crossing is always a good time. Um, I think that all of our interns are legal. So we shouldn't have any issues with that. Chris always looks a bit suspect, especially when he wears a hat and sunglasses, but I think that if he doesn't do that, we should be able to get into Canada without too much of a problem. You guys want some sand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna rattle around. Oh, look at all the receipts in there. He's got a Hot Wheels in there too. It's good to go for the rest of the trip. Also, you got schmutz on your lens. <laughs> Don't tell my girlfriend I'm wrenching with a sweatshirt she bought me. She doesn't watch these videos, it's fine. <laughs> We're supposed to walk off frame, I guess. Uh, well, it's, we don't need to. Well. Well. See ya. Oh, wrong way. 